thing's right. And, uh, you know, if you believe in Jesus, you did the right thing. That's, that's what makes us right. And they asked the question, uh, Jesus, what do, we, what do we need to do to do the will of God, the work of He said, believe on, believe on me. And he said, that's the work of God. Glorify him. That's it. And, uh, so let's pray and, and talk to him. Father, we're glad we can, uh, that we have received you. And thank you, Lord, for uh, new life in Christ and your presence every day with us. And, Lord, we want to be close to you. We want our nation to turn back to you. And we're uh, impossible for us to do it. When we just trust you to that we'll look to you and not to things, not to people, not to the president, not to the Congress, not to the uh, leaders, but look to you, that you would lead us through this thing and get us out and you'd be glorified in it. We pray for each person that's here today, Lord, just uh, you know them, you know their names, you know their, and in their names are written in heaven. And uh, we're glad of that today, that we can rejoice because our names are written up there with you. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. We don't deserve it. We're so undeserving of anything that you'd do for us. You've been kind to us, gracious to us. You gave us grace when we didn't deserve it. You gave us a new life, and we didn't deserve that. You've blessed us since we've trusted you, and you brought us to that point. Granted repentance, faith in you, and you've just changed our lives, and yet we're still sinners, and we need you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, what qualifies a person to be used of God, and how does God use people in his work? And we think that, uh, well, this is the way it ought to be. And if there's one thing that, that I've noticed, and I've noticed this in uh, our kids, while we was off, we played cards a lot. And we do things. And it was brought to my mind so much what being double-minded is. What would you classify as being double-minded? You're here today, but where's your mind? Where's your heart? See, when, and this is the way the kids are. We're, we're, we're playing skip bow, we're playing something, and they're over here. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. Okay. Okay. They play. That's being double-minded. Their heart is not in what's going on. Now, see, this, this is where the church comes in. Are we double-minded? Are we so busy with other things that, well, we don't mind this a little bit, but let me get back to what I'm doing. And God says, I want you 100%. Now, everything we do in life is important. I'm not, I'm not trying to make, you know, light of that. We have each have a calling in life. Now, I, in, uh, I, won't, I won't let Trey do that. Like if we're, yeah. we're eating supper. Yes. We're off the phone. That's what it should be. No phone, no TV. No, no, that's right. Let's, let's just do this. We'll do let's one thing let's at focus time. on what we're doing. And, and, our, and our young people today are so unfocused. Oh, they're over here and over yonder, and it's affecting them. But what is Satan trying to do? And this is keep us busy to where we don't have time for the Word. In John chapter 8, uh, I was looking at this verse this week, and, and the Lord reminded me of uh, some things. And John 8 and 30, verse 30. Uh, but God has a purpose for you, and you and I need to know what that purpose is. Uh, how we miss that purpose, how we get sidetracked a lot of times, and we get into stuff that's not really important. And in verse 30, and Jesus is here, and speaking to, uh, uh, he had talked to a woman that was caught in adultery. Uh, he told him he was the light of the world. And then he answered the Jews, and here's what he told them. And, and as he spake these words, Jesus is telling them about himself. Many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If. Now why, why, did, why did God put an if in here? If. You continue 
in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? So that you can you can actually be not in God's word, and you can not be a disciple indeed. Okay? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And we live in a day when we're not free. We do not want to know the truth a lot of times. Uh, how many of you notice that people today reject the truth? They just don't want to hear. It. No, I don't want to hear that. I mean, this, this is the way it is. This is the way I think, and I'm not going to take the word. Now, let me ask you, how much time did you personally, this week, spend in the Word of God? I'm, I, this, now, let me say this. Facebook is not your Bible. Right? That's not your Bible. But how much time did you personally spend in God's Word, listening to God, trying to talk to God, trying to listen to gospel music, trying to trying to spend time talking to Him, finding His direction? Wouldn't you hate to go to hell from a church view? Well, that would be awful, wouldn't it? So, what if, okay, if, if we could get, and I find this in my children, they're busy. My grandchildren, they're busy. But what are they busy about? Is it the Word? Is it what God wants? Or is it what the world wants? Now, there's religion in this. But is, are they really listening to what God is saying that they're continuing in His Word? His Word will not return to Him void. Now, we're in the house of God. We're not under condemnation anymore, right? We're not condemned. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came that you might have life. Now, you tell me today what makes heaven rejoice. When one sinner comes, repents. When one sinner, well, what about the 90 and 9? Okay, go to, go to Luke 15. And we will just, it's amazing. <laughs> I heard, uh, I heard a pastor talking about, I had never thought about it this way, but in Luke 15, uh, Luke, Luke, Luke 15 and 7, well, well, we're starting verse 4. When, uh, what man of you having an hundred sheep, this is in Luke 15 and 4, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. What was he searching for? He was searching for that one sheep that was lost. Now, what are we searching for? What's our focus today? Is it, I have, I mean, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. That's what John said. I have no greater joy. Now, how many of us would be quickly to say our children and grandchildren and our family are not walking in truth? They really don't know the truth. They don't want to know the truth. They actually want to make fun of religion or That's Christianity. What I to say. Huh? When you stand for the truth, and I am really getting sick to death of it, then I am ridiculed and I am mocked and I am everything. I do nothing right. And everything I do is, is just I'm insulted by it. Yeah. Well, I'm fixing to cut loose on that. Well, well sometimes you have to. Cut loose, girl. Uh, Jesus even had a temper. I am. I'm sick of it. Yeah. Well, you get sick well, of it. Well, you can only take so much. Okay. Then, then you and, say and then you explode. Yeah. So yeah. before yeah. you explode, just, just it doesn't do any good to say anything. Go ahead and say something. You, but my girls, but, not my girls. but even if it doesn't, but even if it doesn't do any good, it still gets off your chest, and it makes you, you feel you better. You're not holding it in. Yeah. Yeah. So but the see, depression and anxiety is not there. Well, you got it off your example. chest. It was, we went over to Kelly's for a birthday thing, just a little bitty thing. We had hamburgers and stuff. Well, uh, I didn't play cards. They were playing cards. And uh, we were sitting there, and I thought, well, why don't we just get up and go in the kitchen, kind of clean up, you know, and just 
that's where I was raised. That to me was character. That's where my mama raised me. Yeah. You don't go eat a meal and just sit down and let somebody else clean up after you. I didn't have anything else to do. I went in there. Well, later on, Paul comes up and, yeah, what all have you not done? Have you have you mopped the floors? Have you done this? Have you done that? And I wanted to say, I'd have put a mop oh, in his hand. I, I just, I, yeah. I, I said that. No, yeah, I would have gotten a mop. No, no, I know we're off the, the subject. No, I don't yeah. understand how much of that I take from everybody, yeah. except my girls. Right. But I take that. And I, I am sick to death, huh? I kind of know what you're talking about, Silver. Uh, I'm sick of it. You should have considered it. You should have come down to my yeah. mother and them down there and everybody, my brothers and sisters, and everybody down there. And, and nobody would get in the kitchen and help food. No. Or clean the, uh, help clean the dishes after you eat. Right. Well, why should you my be in such a and Diane had to do it. Yeah. I'd always be the only one in the kitchen cleaning. He said, y'all get in that kitchen and you clean them dishes up. Get tired of y'all sitting on your rumps. Yeah. And set your mama down. <laughs> he finally did some clothes. He got tired of it. So why would that pop up just out of the clear blood? What did that have to do with anything? What? He didn't have any reason to even say anything in the first place. Both of them. They are. They they Both little, Kelly's they husband too. Me. Not Kelly. Kelly's husband. Right, Kelly's. Ava's husband. And they, uh, of course, I don't know what they tell them when they get home. I know April has gotten Paul before and tell him to shut up and quit that. But it doesn't do any good. It's just his character, his nature. That's the way he was raised. It's like he's jerked up by the hair of the head, and that's it. Sandra. They're the one with the problem, not you. I know, but it hurts me. <laughs> it's hurt me. At my age, it's hurt me. I don't. I don't deserve to be talked to like that. If I'm, if I'm saying something to them and carrying on the conversation and saying something that's not right, I didn't say anything to them. So what really needs to happen is sit down. We just sit down and talk to him. Say we don't, we don't want that. And we don't appreciate that. Let's stop You're not going to do that, then. Well, we need to. That's, you want that's the thing we need to do. And a lot of times, they, I just turn things. around and hand him the rag. Yeah. I had to, uh, what time was when the kids uh, was over the house? They spent the night. I fixed spaghetti. All right, and all them around the table, I stand up and eat. So I get through. Everybody just gets up, walks off, leaves a plate in there, and I thought, I'm going to bed. So I went to bed. They come in there next morning and said, uh, are you going to make breakfast? I said, I ain't making nothing until that kitchen's cleaned up. And you know, it took me five minutes and that kitchen was clean. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's just like when we have something at the uh, in the fellowship hall or when we had the Liz and Bees and we uh, cooked like for a week. Right. What did we do? Wash dishes. We washed dishes. We, we cleaned up every time we ate, and that was a big cleanup. Yeah. So that's what we did. We finished eating, and what and did we I do? Don't, don't we got up wrong. and cleaned up. I don't mind doing that. That's my nature. My mom, right. That's my what, mama did that. She taught me. You're raised that. to do that. That's what you and do. I, I think nothing of it. Mm -mm. I just, you know, but I'm so sorry. We, we allow things that are hard that hurt us and sometimes we just don't approach it and we live in a selfish generation there's a lot of it too and people are not trained they're taught they're not taught no they're, they're not, not they're, they're not just, the character's gone with most people today they don't have any character character and respect and and respect they have no respect there's no more yes ma'am no ma'am yes sir no sir thank you <laughs> right uh, and the Lord knows that. He knows that we deal with things. He knows that uh, the, but in, this, in this verse here, he leaves the 90 and 9 in the wilderness and goes after that which is lost until he find it. Now, each one of these things that he talks about here, one of them is a lady that go, lost the coin. Uh, and then he said, and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. 
For I have found my sheep which was lost, and I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So God is really excited. The Heavenly Father is excited when, listen, if God gave his son for us and he did, don't you know that he did that? Why did God do that? So that we could be found. That's what God's saying here. I, I mean, and neither what woman having a hundred pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and look, seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. So there's rejoicing here because something was lost and is found. So uh, likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Now, do you think that's Christians rejoicing over one sinner? I mean, do, do, let me say this. Do, do you think that people see when something good happens on earth? I, I don't know that. I can't answer that. I mean, that's a hard question. Whether they see what's going on here. But we do have people that's waiting on us. We know that. When we go to heaven, I want y'all to think about You know, when we go to heaven, you're going to have people. There's going to be congregations of folks and people that we've known. It's going, we're going to have a time. We're going to spend a thousand years on the earth when Jesus... what. What's the next thing to happen is that Jesus is going to come back and take his church out. Now, to purify his church, he's, he's going to have to deal with us, right? Is the church a mess today or not? It's just a mess. I mean, we, we see so many things. People have gotten to the point. They're just not interested. You know, it's just, well, whatever. You know, I mean, I'm, and if you witness for the Lord, that's, that's what he's talking about here. There's people that's lost. And what are you to do? You say, well, I don't know. Uh, let's just take, let's just take uh, Moses, for instance. Here's Moses. And how, how did God use Moses? How did he get him to a place to be usable? You say, well, he was a great guy. No, he was wicked. He killed a guy. He's being caught. He's being caught up with. But how did, how did God even raise him up? They were killing babies. See, and his mama says, let's get a basket. It's so bad now. Let's get a basket. You say, is it bad? It was bad. When, when they start killing babies, America, yeah, that's it. They put them in a little basket. Now, how many of you know it would be kind of dangerous to put a baby in a basket with alligators and everything else out here and let it just float down the river? Now, what do you think she was doing? She went back home and what's going on? What do you think she's doing? She's praying. And God watch over it. Now, this just happened. This is what we would say today. This just happened that all of a sudden, her, uh, her Moses' sister had put him in there and here's Pharaoh's daughter and she's out here for to take a bath in the river. There's a, there's a baby crying out there. What an accident. Huh? Yeah. Accident? No accident. Now, now here, here's where we're going. Hot <laughs> love. Yeah, then it wasn't love. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, here comes this little, they said, go out there and get that baby. She said, that's probably one of those Hebrews that they're trying to kill. And she adopts the baby. Was that a miracle? My gracious alive, she could have died probably for that, but that's Pharaoh's daughter, takes him in, trains him, teaches him. Now you say, well, how did that happen?